Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me and today we are making a lovely lemon chiffon body and hand lotion. I am so smitten with this lotion. I was originally just gonna call it like citrus lotion and that's kind of what I call it at the end of the video and then I started trying and I was like, oh, I can't call this something as boring as just citrus lotion because it feels like silk chiffon on my skin and it smells like lemons and then it makes me think of, you know, like lemon chiffon pie and yeah, it deserved a better name. So here we are. I've been noticing one of the more common comments and questions that I've been getting on my lotion videos are, can I put this in a pump top bottle? And a lot of my lotions really aren't very pump top bottle friendly, at least not the ones that I've been sharing on YouTube. They're really, really thick. And so you kind of end up with that, like that Slurpee problem, right? Where you have sort of the straw in the Slurpee and the Slurpee is just sort of like hanging out. And so you've just kind of drilled a hole through the middle of your lotion, but it's not flowing down to the bottom of the, the tube to pump it out. And so you end up with sort of just a lot of quite thick lotion at the bottom of a bottle with a very narrow opening and it's difficult to use. So this lotion is very pump friendly. I have Le Pump Hair and you can see, boo, pumps out beautifully. So if you're looking for a pump friendly lotion, this is definitely your jam. And if you're looking for a lighter lotion, this is also your jam. Uh, this one uses more of a 80-20 ratio of oils to water, or sorry, water to oils, 80% water-ish ingredients and water soluble ingredients and about 20% oil soluble ingredients, or I would usually do more like 75-25. So that does tip this lotion a little bit more to the lighter, thinner, more pump friendly side of things. If you are familiar with essential oils, you will know that most citrus essential oils aren't great for putting on the skin because they cause photosensitivity. Bergamot especially can cause some pretty serious burns if you apply it to your skin and then go out in the sun. So in order to get the citrusy scent in this lotion without worrying about breaking out in a blistering sunburn, I have used a combination of three essential oils that smell like citrus, but aren't. So we will be using lemongrass, Litsea cubeba, also known as Mei Cheng, and lemon myrtle, all of which smell really bright and citrusy, but won't make you break out in some horrific sunburn if you go outside after putting this lotion on. I'm also trying a new ingredient for me. It is sea kelp bio ferment. And so I'm using this where I would usually use silk. So vegans take note, this is a good alternative to silk. It is a film forming ingredient that helps seal moisture into our skin, which is awesome, especially cause it's March and crazy, crazy, crazy dry here. And it's always crazy, crazy dry here, but I digress. It gives the, skin, the lotion just like this absolutely wonderful feel on your skin. And it's one of the key ingredients in creme de la mer, which is, like a $300 for two ounce lotion. So you can feel pretty darn posh using this lotion that you made for nowhere close to $300. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's enough of me talking. Let's go make some lotion. We'll begin by combining our water part and our oil parts in two separate heat resistant glass measuring cups. So in this beaker, I have 169 grams of distilled water. And to that, I'm going to add two grams of a lantoin. And thank you for all the people who commented to tell me how I'm supposed to say that. Four grams of vegetable glycerin and four grams of sea kelp bio ferment. So this is a good alternative for silk. It uh, functions in much the same way in our lotion. So if you don't have this, because it is a little bit weird uh, and brand new for me, this is the first time I've ever used it. You can use one of your hydrolyzed silks instead. And then for our oil part, we have nine grams of emulsifying wax NF four grams of cetyl alcohol. And as you can see, this is not alcohol in the uh, drink it on a Saturday night out sense. This is a fatty alcohol and we're using it as a thickener. And 22 grams of safflower oil. So we're going to put each of these in our water bath. So this is just a wide flat bottom saute pan with about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go put this on the stovetop over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through and to ensure the elantoin uh, dissolves fully because it is water soluble, but needs a bit of encouragement. Otherwise it can be kind of shardy on your face, which is awful. So here we go. It's so about 20 minutes later and we're done with the heating portions. So we can remove these and set our water bath aside. Step one is pouring our water part into our oil part. 
Now, really the only reason that I pour the water part into the oil part instead of the other way around is because the water part is more viscous and so you are more likely to get all of it out of the beaker. Um, that is my only rhyme or reason for that. So you can see that's immediately becoming milky, which is great. So now let's uh, get our immersion blender in the game here. So we'll start with short bursts. Um, chances are, if I went full speed ahead, we would have sort of a cyclone of very thin hot lotion spraying everywhere. So short bursts to kick things off until the lotion gets viscous enough that it won't do that. I don't know if you can see that, but this lotion is quite literally still steaming hot. So I'm going to leave it to cool for about 10 minutes before coming back and blending it some more. So it's been about 10 minutes, still very liquidy. As you can see, a couple thickening bits starting to form on the top, but still quite, quite warm and very, very thin. So let's keep blending. We're starting to get a bit of viscosity happening here and I was able to work up to a continuous blend so it's definitely starting to thicken and cool a bit but as you can see this is sort of maybe the consistency of like unwhipped heavy cream so definitely want that to thicken up a bit more so we'll leave it for another 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes later and getting some thickening going on on top that's great. All right probably getting reasonably close, but let's give this another blending and see where that leaves us. So this is still pretty warm and that's not surprising, you might be thinking usually it's not this warm at this point in time in my videos, but this batch of lotion is twice the size that I would usually do, so it makes sense that it would take a little longer to cool down. So I'm going to leave this for about 15 minutes to let it cool down a bit more. So about 15 minutes later and this is just kind of barely warm, so that's great. Ooh, and we've got a lovely, lovely texture going on here. That's gorgeous. All right, well, we are ready to add our preservative and our vitamin E. I've read conflicting things about the heat part of melting the oils being sufficient to damage the vitamin E, so I'm kind of toying with adding it during cool down, uh, though I'm not 100% convinced that it's necessary. So I have one gram each of vitamin E and liquid germol plus. So the vitamin E is an antioxidant. Don't let anybody tell you it's a preservative, it is not, but what it will do is it will help keep our oils in this lotion from going rancid on us. And then here's the Liquid Germal Plus. Now for our essential oils. So we're going for something citrusy, but not photosensitizing. So we're going for things that smell citrusy, but aren't. So you have Litsea Cubeba, Lemon Myrtle, and Lemongrass. I'm gonna do about five drops of Litsea Cubeba five drops of lemon myrtle and five drops of lemongrass and that smells wonderfully citrusy so for our bottle I've got a pump top bottle here that I got from Ivan at Yelnavi and I gotta say this uh this pump top mechanism is a little bit flawed in that um if you're familiar with these pump top mechanisms you know that they come sort of pushed down like that and they stay like that until you sort of unscrew them and I found that this one was absolutely impossible to unscrew once you'd put it in the bottle, which isn't great because of course, usually when, if, if you were selling these or if you were giving them away, or even just when you make them and you may, maybe make a couple bottles, you usually don't want to open this until it's already on the bottle. So having to like pull it out and then have a bunch of lotion on here and, and unscrew it. I don't know. I, I don't think that as cool looking as this pump top lid looks, I don't think it's very well thought out. So we've got a funnel here and let's fill her up. All 
All right, well, I've got some extra here, so I think I'll go take a bath and lotion myself up right away. But there you go. You just made a lovely citrus body lotion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe with links to everything I used in this recipe and links to this recipe on my blog. See you next time.